Henry Barassa in the 1920s. Who is Henry Barassa? You have no idea who he is. I only found out who he was a few days ago. He was born on September 1st in 1868 in Montreal, Quebec. He was a publisher for his newspaper called Le Devoir. And he was also a politician for most of his career. He's had many political roles in his career as well. I actually go over that on the right side of the screen. He had tried to prevent conscription in both World War I and World War II. Both times led to failure. He founded Le Devoir, as I previously stated, which is a newspaper that actually still exists today in Quebec that focuses on politics, which is boring. He died on August 31st in 1952 in Outremont, Quebec. He was essentially a mini-me of Laurier. That's Bourassa's political roles. From 1896 to 1907, he was a member of Canadian Parliament for La Belle. I had no clue what that is. He was a member of it in 1925 to 1935. From 1908 to 1909, he was a member of Legislative Assembly of Quebec for Montreal Division No. 2. Yeah, from 1908 to 1912, he was a member of Legislative Assembly of Quebec for St. Hayat. Hayat. Well, he was part of the Liberal, Liberal Party. Uh, he was also, as I previously stated, wait, did I pre- no, I didn't say that. He was against World War I conscription. Henry Barassa's life in the Roaring Twenties. Henry Barassa had returned to public office in 1925 after leaving in the earlier 1900s. He was, la- he was later defeated in 1935. In 1922, Lionel Goblin and Quebec nationalists wanted to separate Quebec from the rest of, of Canada. Henry had the idea of only the Canadian Parliament could declare war. Later, Mackenzie King actually made this a law in 1925. He was trying to keep the country from dividing in two, which would be the English on one side and the Quebec people on the other. He did a terrible job at doing that though, at least did, they didn't become their own cunt. So was his life in the 1920s roaring? No, it wasn't. That that looks miserable. That looks depressing. Who brass his allies? He had no long-term allies, really. Uh, he worked with Laurier to prevent conscription, which, as I previously stated, fail. He worked with Prime Minister during the 1920s, Mackenzie King, to change the role of the Governor General. His supporters were actually his allies, pretty much, because that's what the supporters are. He had worked with conservatives to oppose a U.S. capital investment as well. By the way, he was liberal. Not many had actually dealt with similar situations as Burasa did. At least, not to my knowledge and research I had done. Most political party leaders were actually afraid of Burasa. They were worried that he would get control of the country. As he had a huge say in pretty much everything. And he had a huge political role, more so during the World War I. The most similar further in the past that I don't know why I thought this, Louis Riel, kind of? They both support groups that not many would support. Um, I really don't, yeah. Uh, what things continue through others today, though, that he was trying to do, or something along those lines. Everyone's trying to unite. Everyone, either by race, gender, background of some sort, whatever it is, something. People are trying to keep Quebec a province of Canada and make it not its own country. Also, Canadians are still trying not to get Americanized as he really did not want that. Burasa did not want that as he wanted to focus on more of the Canadian virtues instead of Moonies. Brass's Montreal newspaper, as I said before, still exists today. Quebec citizens still want to not be connected to Canada in any way, shape, or form. I'm not saying my opinion on that. Uh, he still is a str- there still is a strong hate between Quebec and the rest of Canada. I need to speed up. More people support women's rights, which Henry was very much against that. He was not a supporter of women's rights. Sort of things. Uh, the parliament controls almost every major event that happens in the country, like 
national state of emergency. I don't remember when that happened. We're more Americanized now. We are very much more Americanized with, you know, that beautiful picture right there in the right corner. Different political parties don't work too well with each other anymore or ever. Politicians don't do anything anymore. I think some of you know what I mean. Canada and the U.S. are best friends. Goodbye.